Hi guys, Will Terry here, and uh, I'm making an update video in my car. <laughs> I um, It's a long story, but uh, I've been super busy this last uh, couple weeks, and I just found a piece of time that I could use to make this update video, and I wanted to get it out. Um, and I'm taking my brother to the airport in about an hour, and I just thought, I'm going to make a video for my phone. I'm apologizing for this you get the steering wheel in there. I'm just sitting out in my driveway and uh, I, it, I just needed a quiet place to make this video. Um, we've been uh, so super busy at SVS Learn that um, I just haven't had a chance to make an update video, which I actually did and then I deleted it. And so I wanna talk about everything pertaining to my Kickstarter. My wife says, I should call this how I how I'm not going to make six figures on my Kickstarter. <laughs> she loves to poke the bear, um, and so I'm just going to kind of dive in one by one and and kind of answer questions because I'm getting a lot of questions. Um, and so the first thing is, why did you delete the video that you made on this subject? And the the answer to that is, we we um, recorded about three thousand of you saw that video. And um, we we decided to, for our SVS Learn podcast, our Three Point Perspective podcast, to start recording them uh, so we could put them on YouTube. So we thought, well, we'll just start with this one on the, uh, the failed Kickstarter. And uh, so I did that. I recorded that with Jake and Lee. If you didn't get a chance to see it, it was the three of us talking. Um, and I posted it here on my channel. It was also going to go out for the podcast, um, just the audio. And it would, it would have also gone on our um, SVS channel. And um, so we made that. And the, the, to back up just a little bit to understand, people, when you talk about fan art in the artist community, especially in, you know, in the illustration animation industry, people are really polarized. There really isn't a lot of middle ground. And what you find is half, about half the people hate it, half the people love it. And there's, there, there are pretty uh, passionate debates on both sides. I understand both sides. And I've talked about both sides on my channel before. Um, and how I understand, you know, you know, obviously I'm making fan art, but I also understand why people hate it. And um, the other thing you have to understand is if you've never made a video where you've talked about... Um, uh, you know, a political topic or a religious topic or any topic where basically anything today, like even if you talk about exercise or weight loss or anything like that, you're going to have, um, you know, experts coming in and know-it-alls and, you know, just, just very opinionated people who, you know, they think they're, they think they have the answers to everything. And I'm, I, you have to understand my personality. I am a, I am a very, I'm a person who values nuance. I think that it's very rare that there are black and white answers to anything. So the thing that actually gets me going is when I see someone going, there's only one way to do this, or there's only one way to do that, or you're right, or you're wrong. And it's so rare in this world that you find clear cut answers. And it really does. Uh, now, there are times where there, there are clear answers to things, you know, like, should you hit your head with a hammer? I mean, I'm like looking for the nuance in it right now, but I mean, pretty much no, but it's very rare that, that problems are solved that way. And really we're better than this. We are, we are as a, as a, as a human species, we're better than trying to reduce everything down to right and wrong. Yes or no, black or white. There are, there, there's nuance to everything. So keeping that in mind, when you make a video, you'll you'll notice like when when YouTube first came out, people would be like, "Hey, this is my opinion on this. This is my opinion on that." Now, people are like, almost every video is, "This is the way that I've chosen to do this, and you might choose to do it a different way." And I realize that my way isn't right. It's just the way that I do. I mean, there's all this bullcrap uh, ways of of explaining things, o over explaining your reasoning for stuff, because in your mind you're anticipating all the hatred that you're going to get. So with that in mind, when we made that, that video, Jake and Lee are, you know, they know that I'm going to come with the pro fan art, um, uh, opinion. And they felt like 
they were going to get grilled if they didn't really push back. So they really hit me with a lot of hard questions. Um, they didn't, didn't hold any punches and they just really, they basically asked, you know, when you're, when you're interviewing someone for, for a group of people, you have to try to cover all sides. And that's what they tried to do. Anyway, fast forward, we made the video. They asked a lot of tough questions. And then I started getting DMS from everybody, uh, you know, from like, I got, I got about 15 and 15 messages, which were Oh my gosh, Will, is everything all right at SVS? Is, um, yeah, are you guys all right? Are you guys fighting? Is there something wrong? Why were they so harsh? You know, why did they, you know, so there were a lot of people that were like really concerned for us as a group or, and for me. And, you know, like they shouldn't have asked these questions. They shouldn't have asked those questions. And I realized like, and then some, a couple of them were saying, I think this makes you guys look bad. It looks like you guys are having an internal battle with each other, which we're not at all. And, um, and so I decided to pull it for that reason, because I didn't, I didn't mind the the dialogue. There was some really good, um, comments in the, in the, in the discussion below. Obviously there were people that are coming by taking swings at me and stuff, which is fine. It's predictable, but, um, that's not why I deleted it. I deleted it because, um, Uh, It just, people were saying it made us look bad. So that's basically it. So they felt really bad. And I'm like, don't feel bad. You guys were pushing back. That that was your job. And we were trying to make a complete um, uh, podcast. But we didn't, we didn't really get to discuss, you know, what would happen or what is going to play out with me trying to get licenses and things like that. So we kind of shelved this idea for later. So we'll probably circle back and and redo the podcast at some point in the future. So that's the whole reason why it was taken down. And that's actually the reason why I'm making this video uh, to make an update for you guys, because I'm getting my inbox in my email is just jam packed. I can't get through all the messages on Kickstarter. Um, We really were making waves. And there's just a ton of people who just wanted to know like what's what's happening. So that's why I'm making this video. So number one, that's why we took down the video. That's why this video is going up. Um, and so to to give you some information, what happened was Marvel sent or uh, called us, and basically we had a discussion on the phone, and they they or actually sorry we called them because they um, they um, sent a claim, a copyright claim to Kickstarter saying this is our stuff and we don't like this campaign or whatever they told them. I don't know what they told them. And so we were told by Kickstarter, Hey, we have to pause it because Kickstarter is basically not going to decide who's right and who's wrong. So I want to clarify. A lot of people think that Kickstarter was upset with us or said that we were wrong. They never did. They said, you guys need to resolve it. You two parties to where both of you are, are okay with the Kickstarter continuing, and then we'll unpause it. Well, Marvel is not going to do that. They, they fought, you know, they said, we don't want you to do this Kickstarter. So in trying to get a license with them, we could not get to the right department in, and the process is super lengthy. And we're in, we're actually in line right now. We're, we're trying to, um, you know, we're trying to file for getting the licenses and trying to to find out what what it'll even cost. We don't even know yet. So they haven't gotten back to us. So the, the process is really lengthy. Um, then they have to, from what I understand, they have to go through our financials. They have to find out, um, uh, they want to know uh, personal financial information. They want to know uh, product information. They want to know where we plan to sell it. I mean, there's just They go through you with a fine tooth comb to find out if they want to work with you. And from what I understand, it takes months and months to go through that process. So for all the people asking, you know, it, they, that were asking during the Kickstarter is going to be turned back on. And the other, the other really sad thing is when Kickstarter pauses a, um, a, a campaign, at least in our case, we couldn't message everybody through Kickstarter. So it was a, it was a total mess that way. They should have, I feel like they should have allowed allowed us to send answers to people, but that's why everyone was kind of left hanging. Um, and, and it was just a, just kind of a huge mess. And 
the only answer they were getting from Kickstarter is that it's on pause. So it, every day I'd have, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 messages saying what's happening, what's happening, what's going to happen. And I couldn't respond to them. It was super frustrating. Um, so, uh, um, so that's kind of where we are now. We're, the Kickstarter obviously isn't going to happen, at least the one that we did right now. We don't know if we'll get licenses um, to be able to put some sort of a book together in the future, but we're trying. Um, so there's that. Um, now, you'll also probably notice that I've disabled the comments in the, on this video, and I never do that. And the reason for that, quite simply, is I'm weak. I love to talk. I love to communicate. I love to argue. I love to push back. I love to um, congratulate. I love to be involved. And if you're friends with me on Facebook, you know that I get into discussions with people. Um, and I enjoy the nuance of things. I, I enjoy looking at a problem and looking for solutions, creative solutions. I love talking about, um, you know, ideas to problems. And, and, and I, I really, like I said, I just don't understand the, the black and white thinking that seems so prevalent today. It's, it actually seems like it's like we've regressed in some ways as a, as a society that we, we, we've turned our brains off for thinking. So I, one of the reasons why I turned off comments, quite frankly, is I don't want to get sucked into conversations. And I see the same things over and over again, like people saying things like, well, you should have known better. You should have known that this was going to happen. And, and they're right to an extent. But you don't know if something, if you're, you don't know if you're going to get, uh, what we didn't know if we were going to get Marvel, you know, saying no or not. We really wanted to know. And it was worth trying for us. Um, and now we know they don't, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to agree to you selling something online. They're going to push back. They're going to fight. Um, to this day right now, we still haven't gotten a cease and desist simply because the Kickstarter was paused and the, the attorneys were, uh, confident that, uh, it wasn't moving forward. And so in their mind, they, there was nothing to say cease and desist too, because it was over. It was done. Um, but the people that, that are, that will say things like, you know, you, you should never be able to do any kind of parody at all. Just don't understand the law. And, um, there, there are some, there are some really, I mean, even judges and juries don't fully understand the law or in other words, cases are decided on opinion. So for instance, um, you know, you take Weird Al the, the music parody guy, you take Saturday Night Live, you take Mad Magazine, um, Scary Movie, uh, and, and tons of other uh, parody, or, you know, uh, parody properties that have been done. And when I would get into discussions with people, I would, I would find that we would, be, we would get to an impasse when I realized they, most of the people that really, really, really hate fan art or will say, well, it's illegal to sell fan art. I even had, I even had uh, some woman on my Facebook tell me that I was a horrible person for for making these characters. And I mean, it's like, really? And and so she she wrote this whole long thing, and then and sa says at the bottom, and this is why I'm unfriending you, so you can't respond to me. It's like, well, that's kind of a really helpful. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, um, and. And so, but the thing that I found in common with these people that, that are just, you know, it's like they've got their hands over their ears and they will not have a nuanced conversation with you. They, when I, when I, when we get to the part of the conversation where I say, well, what about Saturday Night Live? What about Weird Al? What about Mad Magazine? What about Scary Movie? They will, if this is, if it's a typed conversation on Facebook, they just disappear. They never respond to that. They don't, I've even had some people say, I have actually had a few people respond to that who said, well, I don't think they should be allowed to do what they do either. So it's like, okay, well, you're not really part of the conversation because the conversation I'm having is what's actually happening in the real world and what courts have decided already. So you want to cite law that I'm not allowed to do this, yet you're not willing to admit that the law has actually allowed a lot of these things. 
So all of those ones that I mentioned, Weird Al, Saturday Night Live, Mad Magazine, the Wayne brothers, they've all been sued. They've all received cease and desist. They've won and they've lost cases. Um, I did a deep dive researching to find out what actually happens. And really what it comes down to is it comes down to the judge and or the jury that you get uh, when, when your, when your case goes to trial. So it's, it's basically the luck of the draw. Some judges are probably more lenient on parody and some are, are, are harsher. And in some cases have more merit and some cases have less merit. And like I've said before, not all of the, the fan art pieces that I've created, I don't view them all the same. I see some of the, some of the characters as more safe and some as less safe. Absolutely. It's funny also when, when there were another reason why I disable the comments is because whenever people point to an example of mine, they always point to the ones that are the weaker ones. They'll never point to the stronger ones. They'll never point to the ones that don't look anything like the character, that are hard to figure out, that have a really solid concept that's completely original. They'll never talk about those. They'll only talk about the ones that are, that are less safe. And I'm like, yeah, I'll give you that. There, the, some of these are... I could actually, I could see myself losing in a court of law. I'm not saying that I would win, but you're saying absolutely 100% I would lose, but yet we don't know because we haven't been to court. Therefore, it is nuanced. Therefore, it is not black and white. Therefore, there's a lot of gray area here. And a lot of people feel, it's interesting to me that a lot of um, these black and white thinkers, they also... They also seem to think that if a big company tells you not to do something, then you're bad and you should have known better and you shouldn't, you should just not do it. And it's like, well, but what about all those other properties who had to fight to be able to, to get big enough to where now they have enough money that a lot of people probably won't bring lawsuits against them because they know it'll be a battle in court. That It's not just a matter of sending a cease and desist it's going to, let's figure this out in court. Let's go have our day in court and let the jury decide, let the judge decide what's, what, if this is legal or not. For those of you who are kind of the people who I'm describing right now, who are really angry and wish you could bang out a comment right now, go look up A. Cuff Rose versus Campbell, which is the lawsuit between... Um, the, the record label for Roy Orbison and the record label for Two Live Crew, the rap group. And they they did a parody on Pretty Woman. So they, they took the song from Roy Orbison called Pretty Woman, Pretty Woman Walking Down the Street. And uh, and then they, they made their own rendition of it, but they used the same words and they used the same melody. They just changed up the beat. And they got sued by... Uh, by Roy Orbison's label, and they lost. So eight, two, two live crew won. And uh, so I, the reason I, I cite that, and A cuff is A C U F F if you want to look it up, Rose versus Campbell. Um, the reason that I cite that is uh, there are, there's precedent of artists who have made a complete parody of another property and who have won in a court of law. Now, some people will say, well, you were stupid to do it because you don't have the money to fight a big company like this and you should have known and you should have crawled under a rock and never done it. It's like, okay, uh, there was a good chance that, that this would have happened. And I knew that going in, uh, but I'm a risk taker. That's why I'm an entrepreneur. That's why I'm an artist. Um, I'm always surprised at how many artists get, get into the making of art, which is, which is a creative endeavor, right? You're breaking the mold already. You're not, you know, you're not becoming an accountant. You're not doing what you were supposed to do. None of us were supposed to be artists, right? Go to school, tell your teachers in school that you want to be an artist. They'll laugh. They'll try to direct you somewhere else. You t tell your parents. So we're already, as a group, we're already doing what we're not supposed to do. And then to have half the artists going, you're not supposed to do this. It just, it seems really odd to me. You know, artists are supposed to push back. We're supposed to 
test the boundaries. The best art does that. The best art is disruptive. And this one so far isn't working out on the, the level of the book, but it's worked out for me in so many other ways that like, I mean, I've, I got, um, by pushing back and doing this kind of, this kind of fan art, that is how I got the book series Bonaparte, uh, with, with Random House. That would have never happened without doing this, this project. And there's a few other, uh, assignments that I got from doing this as well. Um, and who knows what I'll get in the future. And, and I am, I was actually going to go to a licensing show in Las Vegas that is in June. And I looked into it. I was that close to pulling the trigger on going down there. The table that I would have to buy was $5,000. And that wasn't the problem either. I was going to spend the money to do that. But the thing that made me not do it this year is I have so much work <laughs> that I started to think, um, there are, there are, there are, there are friends of mine, uh, online who do fan art, who have gotten, uh, really good work with some of these companies like Marvel. So for instance, uh, a shout out to Derek Lofman. He was doing fan art pieces and he actually got hired by a couple of companies. I don't want to mention them cause he, cause but some of the IP owners, some of the, the big, huge ones that I've already talked about in this podcast or in this um, video, um, hired him to do work. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to drag him out with names cause I don't, it's, it can be dicey, but, um, but his, his fan art pieces are really well designed and they're, they're kind of the character al alone. There's not other things in there mucking it up with a, with a, a unique concept. And so his make great stickers. They're, they're simple. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that one of the reasons why he got hired right away is because one they're um, I mean, he's a really good artist, but two, he, he contained them in a way that other, other art directors could look at it and go, well, there's a product line there that we can just tap into mine in my, my, my vision of what's, what I'm doing, they're, they're so varied and so different and there's different body positions. And because of the concept, I had to work other props and things in there that I think if I went down to this show in Vegas, um, all the big companies are there, all the big companies, um, like Disney's got half of that show, but all the, all the, um, I would think, I would think the problem would be that they would need modifications made to them. And so I would be spending $5,000 to go down there and get a bunch of work and that I don't have time to do right now. So they, so they might go, this is great. We want you to do X and, and believe me, it's a great problem to have, um, to have too much work. So where you're turning it down, but to pay $5,000 in the time to go down there and set up to get work that I don't have time to fit in right now, didn't make much sense. So the tentative plan is actually to try to fit that in next year. We've got, like I said, I, I can't remember if I mentioned it, but we're working on some really big projects at sbslearn.com right now. And there are projects that are, are all hands on deck um, so that we're able to make some pretty big announcements later on in the year. And my time is just focused there. Again, that's why I've disabled comments on this video. Even though I love the discussion, I welcome the disagreements. And I, but I want to jump in and, 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 you know, and push back. And I just don't have time for that. I don't have time to go down there and get work that I can't do. So who knows exactly where, uh, this project is going, um, in the future. And a lot of people have really been like consoling me. Like they're really worried for me. Cause I, cause I kind of deleted that video and that was another, then I started getting messages like, is everything okay? I am not on any kind of a ledge right now. In fact, life is awesome. Everything is firing. It was very disappointing to have the Kickstarter um, get canceled or paused or whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, if it was going to happen, it was much better that it happened when it did rather than after we collected money and had to send out uh, books and things like that because then we would have really been in a mess. So everything actually worked out really well. Um, and there's a bright side to everything. And like I said, we're, we're, um, we're just kind of moving forward with shows and stuff like that, but we're not 
going to do the uh, the online stuff. So um, that's kind of where that is. And this is kind of the update. And I think I covered everything that I really need to cover. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I the, the sad thing is I've been neglecting my channel. I've got two people lined up to do interviews that I think you guys will really appreciate. They're young and they're, um, they've been doing, uh, really great work and I'm trying to work that into my schedule as well to get that going because I, I really love the idea that I can, uh, make a video and communicate with, with people, you know, like a lot of the people that I know are watching this. Um, and I don't want to let that go, even though I've got, you know, the, podcast and the school and just all these other things. Um, I love making videos and I love making interviews. I love talking to one of them is one of my former students. And another one is a girl that I met at a show who's just incredible, just an incredible artist. So look for those in the future. Um, I will get those. It's just, it's just hard right now with our schedule, um, uh, with things that we're doing. But, um, anyway, I hope this clarifies for you, and I, I apologize that um, you can't comment on this one. If you really have questions about this this Kickstarter still, if there's things that I didn't answer, you can um, you can try to email me, and I might be able to get back to you, or I might be able to include it in, in an update um, on another video. But as things happen, if, if anything changes, I will definitely make another video to update, and I will talk to you guys later.